Hi, I'm Jack Lynch and we're here at my favorite hobby shop, AAA Hobbies. And today we're going to take a look at some plastic kits. We'll walk down the aisle here. This is my favorite part of this store because I love plastic models. We have a really great selection of aircraft models from all different manufacturers uh, and they span the aircraft goes all the way down this one wall. And on this side there's car models, love car models. Three shelves of them that ride all the way down to here, all the way down to the end. And then at the end here we have armor, air, or I should say armor and figure kits, which I really like also. I like everything. i got to stop saying that. Uh, so I thought we'd take a look first, since we're going to talk about some basics of plastic modeling today. We'll take a look at like snap kits as opposed to glue together kits. And on the shelf up here, there's a whole selection of snap together models. And when I say snap together, I basically mean it's like a regular model, but they're designed to snap together and hold together without glue. So let's just look at all the different things we have here. We have aircraft, we have cars. I'm gonna grab a car. And you know what? This is even more different than just a snap kit. This is called a quick build kit. And this is kind of like a Lego type kit. In other words, you snap it all together like a Lego kit, and then you put um, the parts on top. Uh, also, let, let's grab that and let's grab a regular snap together model. So it says easy snap. So when you come into the store, just make sure you check out the boxes and read whether it's a snap together model or an easy build or a quick build model or a regular glue together model. So if I was gonna buy a glue together model, I'd look around the shelf, see what I like. And let's say we'll grab like this one. This is a nice air, air fix half track model, German half track. So we'll take these, we'll go back to the workbench and we'll sit down and have a look at them. Okay, we took a walk around the store, AAA Hobbies, and we looked at all the great model kits. Can't get enough of it. Um, and we picked out a few different kits. We picked out a Quick Build by Airfix. We picked out a Pegasus Easy Snap Kit, and we picked out an Airfix Glue Together model. So when you get home with your kit, you get your little thing home, and you the first thing you're gonna do is pop the box open. This is the best part of buying a model kit, is opening up the box to see exactly what you got and hopefully it's what you expected. Um, so basically I ripped my plastic off. Throw it in the trash can. And then best part, opening the box up, checking out the contents of the box. And what we have here is a bag that has all the model parts in it. And they're all bagged up nice and tight so nothing's missing. You have a little tiny bag that has the clear piece in it. That's the canopy for the aircraft. And then you have probably, well, you have two decal sheets here. And then the most important part of everything here, which is the instruction sheet for your model. What you want to do is when you get home and you open your kit, you look over the parts and you figure out, you know, what color you want to paint it or what kind of decals you're going to use. Then you want to take your instruction sheet, open it up and take some time. Take some time and look this over. It's not heavy reading. It's basically schematics that show you the assembly sequence of this kit. Familiarize yourself. Look at each picture. Determine the sequence of how you're going to build it. And then take a closer look. And most of the time they'll call out colors on here in case you want to paint things. Like you'd paint the interior of this aircraft before you put the fuselage together. And then various other parts. So take the instructions out. Read them over, look at them, familiarize yourself, and, and don't go too fast. Then you look at the other side, and it basically shows you different paint schemes that you can do on this aircraft, gives you a little history of the airplane, and so forth. So look that over also, because if you're going to paint your model, you're going to want to know what colors you're going to need, and so forth. And most of the time, if you come to a hobby store, this is one of the nice things about shopping at a local hobby store, if you go to the hobby store, they'll let you open this kit up and pull the instructions out and look it over and determine what colors of paint you need and if you need some glue and whatnot. And you can get it right there while you buy the kit and take it home with you. So you can do it all at once. So that's the first thing you're going to do when you get home. I have two different types of kits here. I picked out some various different kits. And this kit right here is something kind of new. This is the Airfix Quick Build Kit. And what I'm going to talk about here is the difference between a snap together and a glue together kit and the tools that you'll need for each. So the Airfix kit here, the quick build kit, is really unique in the sense that all the parts are off of the sprue. And you say, well, what's he mean off the sprue? The sprue in a plastic model is the little injection tree 
that the parts come out on. In other words, when they make a model kit at, at the factory, there's two pieces of a big steel mold that go together like this. And they inject hot plastic into the mold and then pop it open and pull this piece out. And that's the piece that has all the parts for your model on it. And just as an aside, these molds are made in two pieces, so there's always a seam line, and you'll be able to see where to clean the seam lines off the parts, but I digress. The Airfix kit is really great. It's a quick build, just like it says. You take all the parts out, snap them all together, put the stickers on, and bang, you're finished. The traditional snap-together models require a little bit more work. In other words, like I said, all the parts are on a sprue. So how do you get the parts off the sprue? Well, when I was a kid, you grabbed them and you just twisted them off and pulled them off, and they looked terrible because you didn't take your time taking the parts off the sprues. So what you need is, there's two different tools that I use to take parts off a sprue. One of them is a pair of cutters. And there's various different manufacturers that make these, Xeron, Tamiya, other companies. Buy a really good set of cutters. These make it really easy to take the parts off the sprue and you don't have to do as much clean up as if you use a knife. The other tool you can use is an X-Acto knife. This is an X-Acto, I believe it's a number one knife, it has a number 11 blade in it. So X-Acto knife, cutters. And what I'll do is just really quickly take my cutters. And the nice thing about a pair of cutters is you can line them right up on the edge of the sprue or of the injection point. And what we'll do is just snip this off and bang, you have it off. And always look, after you cut a part off a sprue, just look and there's always just a little bit of plastic on there. The cutters are pretty good. They don't leave too much of a spot there, but if there's any excess plastic left from the sprue, you can take your X-Acto knife and just kind of trim it off. And that's how to remove a part from a sprue. The other thing you're gonna need, if you're doing a snap together model, might be some sandpaper or a sanding file or a sanding board. And I have some different examples of those right here. I have a commercial type sanding stick um, that you can put different pieces of sandpaper on. And the reason these are handy is you can get in, let's say I take my fuselage off the sprue here. I cut one of these off. I can go back with the sanding stick and just sand little bits and pieces where I took it off the sprue or where there's excess plastic. You can also use, a, these are homemade sanding sticks. I just get a piece of metal stock and I cut a piece of sandpaper and double stick tape it to the top. And same deal, I can just go in and sand pieces like this, clean things up. You can make bigger blocks. I have bigger sanding blocks that I've made out of plastic blocks. And your regular old sandpaper comes in handy. I buy this you know, at, at the local hobby store. They have different grits of sandpaper, 180, 220, 320. The higher the number, the finer the grit of the sandpaper. So I get sandpaper, I just cut pieces off, and then I use them to clean my parts up. So that's snap together kits. Snap together kits are pretty easy. Once you cut the parts off the sprue, you basically snap them together. And the thing about a snap together kit is, you gotta clean up pretty good before you put them together because once I snap this fuselage together or I snap the parts together, they usually don't come back apart because they're made to, to just snap fit. Um, I'm not gonna push that together yet because I haven't put the interior in. So I figured we'd take a look at plastic uh, glue together kits as well. So a glue together kit usually has more parts, is usually more detailed, and requires glue to hold all the parts together. Snap togethers are designed to snap together and stay together. Whereas a glue kit, as you can see, is basically made to, to use glue. Um, I have some samples of plastic glue here in front of me. I have our basic old fashioned tube cement, which still works great. Tube cement puts a bond in between parts. I also have a liquid cement. Liquid cement is usually used by a more advanced modeler because they understand how to apply this without getting it all over the model because it's watery. It's like the consistency of water. It's very fluid. So basically two types of plastic cement. What I'm gonna do is take this car model that I pulled out of the back here and I'm gonna cut a couple parts off and show you what I do before I put the glue on. You have to prep the parts a little bit and make sure they fit. So what you're gonna do is cut the parts off the sprue, test fit them together to see how they fit, and make sure there's no extra cleanup that you have to do, removing sprue marks or any flash from the mold or anything like that. So I've got my car model here, and what I did was I pulled out the chrome parts, and I'm gonna do my little snipper here. I'm gonna cut my parts off the sprue just by lining up my cutters, snipping it off, 
And this is the rear bumper on this vehicle. Basically, I'm gonna take this part and I'm just gonna eyeball it. And I'm not random about this. I read my instructions and I do this in sequence. If you go out of sequence, you're gonna end up gluing something that you didn't wanna glue. So make sure you do it step by step. So here's my bumper and this is the back of this vehicle. I just basically take a look at it. I fit it in, make sure it fits well. And I'm noticing on this car that there's just a little bit of space down on the back that I have to widen this out, but we'll go into that later. I've, I've test fit my part, take a look at it, make sure that it's clean, make sure that where I cut it off the sprue, there's no marks left. And if there are, I can grab my little sandpaper here and just sand off the marks. And you have to be careful on chrome parts. Chrome parts you don't want to scratch. So you're going to go right in where you cut it off and just clean it up a little bit. Don't have to worry as much on regular plastic parts. So now I've cleaned this up, I've test fit it. The next step is to glue it on. So I can take my tube cement, open my tube cement. And you notice there's just a little tiny opening on the end of the cement. And what you do with this type of cement is you look at how your part goes on and you determine where the best points are to put the glue. In other words, you've got to have good mating surfaces, flats that match up. So I'll look and I'll say, okay, the corners here, look, the, the surface on the corners fits the best. So I'm going to take a little bit of this glue and just run it right down along the top of this on either side and then just fit the part in. All right, I'm going to grab some liquid cement now. And I use, I like to use Tamiya cement and I like to use bottled cement that has a little brush on it. You can see this has a little teeny tiny pinpoint brush on it. It's a matter of personal preference. Some folks like this type of cement that has a little pinpoint on the end where they can flow it on. I personally like a brush and there's a bunch of different brush type cements. So what I do is to use liquid cement and like I say this is a little more advanced. You might want to start with tube glue if you've never done it. If you're more advanced and you're, you, know, you know what you're doing, you take the part and put it on and then you hold it in place, hold it in place with your finger. And then you take some of this liquid cement and you dip your brush in and you just put the brush right along the edge where the part meets. And what happens is the liquid is so fluid that capillary action draws it down into that seam and bonds the parts together. And what's nice is liquid cement usually softens the plastic up so that when you push the part in, the plastics bond together. They don't just have a bond in between, they fuse together. And sometimes you'll get a little bit of a squirt of liquid plastic where it's softened up, which is nice because it fills in the gap a little bit and you can sand that off. But liquid cement, a little bit different than tube cement, a little more advanced, but does a lot of great things. We've looked at our kits, our snap together kits and our glue together kits. Something else that you need to think about when you buy a model kit is, will I paint it or not? Personally, I think that painting is a really good thing because it makes the model look better, obviously. But also, when you go to put the decals on, if you're using water slide decals, which come with a lot of these kits, water slide decals adhere better to a painted surface as opposed to if I just snap my kit together, if I just put this together and put the decals on here, they'll go on. But after a little while, they'll start to peel off and come off because there's no real tooth for the decal to bite down on. So. When you get your kit and you look at your instructions, you look at the back and right here where it shows the paint colors, there's a little chart up top and it's a paint chart and it shows you the different colors you need. Now, sometimes you won't be able to get the exact type of paint that's listed on an instruction sheet, but they'll list the colors and a good hobby store will have a varied selection of different manufacturers paints for you to choose from. I have a, a selection here from the hobby store and Basically, you have a couple different types of paint. You have acrylic paint, which this Tamiya paint is an acrylic type paint. Acrylic is a water soluble paint. You don't have to use lacquer thinners or enamel thinners with it. You can use water, alcohol, something of that nature. And it's really nice. It cleans up well and it doesn't smell very bad. You also have old fashioned enamel paints like testers and model master, testers, model master, and humbrol. Humbrol is a great military color paint range. And the difference between this and the acrylics is these are enamel paints and they thin down with enamel thinner. 
This is a big bottle of testers thinner. I always buy a nice big bottle of thinner because I know I'm going to use more and more and more. I'm going to use more thinner than I use paint. And you're going to thin your paint down, especially if you brush it on. So enamel thinner, enamel paints. We have acrylic paints. And also I have spray cans here. Spray cans are great to work with, but you have to be kind of careful because it is an aerosol based can sprays there's fumes what you want to do is get yourself some rubber gloves and a face mask a respirator and wear it when you use these in a well ventilated area but you'll get your best finish with a spray can if you hand brush paint it'll look nice but sometimes you'll get brush streaks in it this stuff does not streak but you have to learn how to use a spray can when you use spray paint you basically shake it up and we call them rattle cans because they rattle why does it rattle? It has a little ball inside of it that mixes the paint up inside before you spray it. In other words, when these sit at the store, the paint pigment settles to the bottom and you need to shake that up and get it nice and loose inside. I also take these cans and I put them in a little bit of warm water to loosen that paint up if it's been sitting for a long time. This is surface primer. And we'll, the way I usually paint a model is I'll put the sub assemblies together and I'll put the wings on the airplane and the tail surface on and whatnot and I'll mask off maybe the, where the clear parts go. Then I'll take my gray primer and shoot it over the whole surface of the model and prime it gray. That gives me the chance to look at it and see if there's any imperfections or anywhere I want to clean up. But spray primer and then there's spray colors to go on it. The other way you can spray paint is with an airbrush and that's something that we'll talk about in more advanced videos, more advanced techniques, but an airbrush gives you the ultimate control over paint spray so they can do these fancy camouflage schemes and things of that nature and use it for weathering. But to start with, you can brush paint, you can spray paint, or you can airbrush. Thanks for checking us out today and make sure you come to our website www.megahobby.com for all your hobby needs.